Well, remember when photography first came out, it wasn't considered an art form. Same with cinema or video. And it's interesting that people are very skeptical initially because the technology dominates the novelty. So it's very hard to see what is the artistic contribution that's coming out of it. What, what's our explanation for that? Bad During balance. this experimental stage, artists are trying different things out. They're trying to, to use it as an expressive medium. And what they're really trying to get at is, what can you say with a technology that you, could never, that you couldn't express before? The arrival time, the, you know, this is, TK is the overall time of the cycle. Ken Goldberg has his PhD in computer science, specializing in robotics. And he's published dozens of scientific papers and holds several patents. But he's also a groundbreaker in the emerging field of internet art. His interest in technology and art first came together in 1992, when he and his students built a robot that could create art. I was very interested in working with robots to make these paintings originally. And then I was increasingly interested in the, the, the dynamics of the robot as it was painting. So around 92, my students and I developed a, a robot that we put in a gallery setting. And then we had this painting machine in the center, which was this large-scale robot. It was a major amount of work. And one of the disappointments was at the end of the show, I asked how many visitors had come through. And it was only a few hundred. Ken was looking for a way to interact with a larger audience, and in the early 1990s, the growing use of the internet made that possible. So what was exciting about the internet was that you suddenly could have this huge audience, and moreover, they could come to your laboratory. So my students and I were in the lab, and we had this old robot, and it was a very simple robot arm that was arranged over a sandbox where we had buried a number of artifacts in the sand. And so you could, we put a camera on the robot arm, and so over the internet interface, you could move the camera around by clicking on your screen. But what made it unique was the ability that when you got close to something, you could press a button and blow a one second burst of compressed air into the sand. Ken's Mercury project was constructed like an online treasure hunt where web users could actually manipulate objects in the real world, uncovering clues that would help them solve an online puzzle. We started work on this in early 94, and we got credit for, the, for this as the first internet robot. But it also was an art project at the same time. The Telegarden was a sequel, if you will, to the Mercury Project, whereas the Mercury Project was moving, hunting and gathering within a kind of desert-like environment. The idea here was to sort of take the next evolutionary step and move into agriculture. In 1995, Ken and his colleagues built the Telegarden. Guided by a web camera, online users manipulated a robot arm to dig holes, plant and water seeds, and monitor the growth of their plants over time. To us, that was sort of the most absurd activity we could think of. Um, it was the last thing you want to do over the internet. Gardening is about getting your hands dirty, about the whole experience of the soil and the, the plants and the physicality of that. Like most of Ken's work, both the Telegarden and the Mercury Project straddle the worlds of science and art. They're scientific explorations of human behavior over the web, but also a kind of social sculpture, communal experiences for web users that can be understood and appreciated as artistic events. They demonstrate a focus on process and idea that Ken shares with other conceptual artists. Ken is doing something very specific, which is working with robotics. And all of his work is having different users interact with a telerobotic presence over the internet. One of the things that we were in interested in with the telegarden was the social phenomenon of the interaction of people on the net. And they would interact through this physical, organic space, this garden. But we were particularly interested in how they would, would negotiate between each other. And so we set the conditions in such a way that there was no prohibition against planting on top of somebody's plant or overwatering, doing something malicious. Because in order to see if you have interesting behavior, you have to give the opportunity for misbehavior. 
one of the things that Ken is doing is asking questions about human behavior and how do people act when they think other people are watching and how do they act when they think that they're on their own. And that calling into question some of those social behaviors is, I think, uh, one of the essences that does help define this work as art. We wanted to have users over the internet be able to explore a real physical environment and ideally a social environment where other people are moving around. Initially conceived as a mobile robot, the teleactor ultimately assumed human form. A helmet-mounted wireless camera sends video images from the teleactor's point of view live to the web. People would essentially click on images of the environment to indicate what direction they wanted the teleactor to explore. People got confused online. They, they didn't know what the environment was. They didn't have much of a basis for choosing direction. So there was a lot of chaos in that kind of interaction. So we, we needed something that was more structured. So we thought of a number of different scenarios, but the one that we, f we, we found that fits best is a simple physical game that we could play in the laboratory that would involve human bodies, human interaction. And that's where Teletwister comes into the picture. <laughs> Teletwister players log in and are automatically assigned to either the red or blue team. The players vote on where they want the twisters to move. Their votes are averaged and the twisters respond to their commands. The solid science behind this playful exercise gives Ken and his students an opportunity to study the behavior of web users as they work together collectively.